Hello, I'm Mike Erton, and this is the first video in a three video series on a study that I did of evangelical churches in the Chicago area and how they're engaging Muslim communities. And we've entitled this series, Best Practices for Churches to Do Outreach Among Muslims. And in this first video, we're going to introduce the topic, we're gonna to take a look at some models for ministry, and then some examples of those models. So why would Chicago be a good place to do a study of this kind? Well, Garby Schmidt and her book, Islam in Urban America, calls Chicago an American Medina, which is the second holiest city of Islam. And she says this, the Medina in this book is Chicago, a city in the heartland of the United States, where Muslims from all parts of the globe have settled. To these immigrants, Chicago is an American Medina. In this city, they are creating a new home, combining habits of their homeland with an American way of life. In this city, they practice Islam and establish mosques, schools, and colleges. And in this city, they present Islam to their fellow citizens as a component of American life. And as we're going throughout this first session, I want you to keep this question in mind. Can you see a day when Muslims are coming to Christ through the ministry of your local church, being built up into Christ-likeness, and even taking on leadership responsibilities? And what I'd like to introduce is a few charts for describing the study uh, of these, these seven churches that I looked at in the Chicagoland area. So here we can see them listed as A through G, and be thinking about these churches, maybe one of them uh, is like your church. So first is a multi-site suburban church, then a medium-sized suburban congregation of about 200 to 220, a large two-service suburban congregation of about 700, a small suburban congregation of approximately about 40 or 50 people, and then a medium-sized suburban church congregation of 250, a small urban church plant, and a mega church with two campuses of about 3,000. This chart is of the 21 people in the seven churches that I interviewed for this study. And this is the identifier column. That's not really the important thing I want you to focus on. What I want to look at is this detail column over here. And you'll see the highlighted words there. And a lot of them are missionary, lived in the Middle East, missionary, missionary, first generation Asian immigrant. You're gonna see that these are people who are either former overseas missionaries who have returned to the United States, have had some kind of short-term cross-cultural experience, uh, or have been going cross-cultural themselves because they're immigrants to the United States. Also, there were some events uh, that I observed for this study. Uh, there was an international picnic that uh, one of the churches did, one of them went to a mosque vigil, uh, a New Zealand uh, mosque vigil. Um, there's iftar dinners that were attended, ESL classes, interfaith dialogue, and the Arab Fellowship Bible study. And so these are all events that they did with a Muslim community, either receiving them at the church or going to them at the mosque. There are probably three models, you could say, uh, that, that these churches employed. First was the support group model. It's an organized ministry within the church that encourages people in the group to intentionally befriend Muslims. So these are person-to-person -person relationships. So there's a, there's a group in the church, a, a ministry team in the church that's taking responsibility for helping people who have these relationships to do them better. How can we be encouraging one another, praying for one another, and receiving some training as well. Next is the organic model. This is where Outreach is infused generally into the entire congregation from a leadership level down to the congregation. So you're looking to inculcate outreach into the children's ministry, into the youth group, into adult Sunday schools, and think through how to do that. So it's not necessarily there's a focus on the Muslim community, uh, but because you're looking at your entire community, surrounding community and there's a, maybe a mosque or a Muslim community center uh, in that area, then Muslims do fall into that, that purview of outreach. Last is represent the church model. Now, this is a ministry within the church taking responsibility for reaching out to a Muslim community, and they identify themselves as being from the church when they go to the local mosque 
or the Muslim Community Center. So this is Church X going to Mosque Y saying, we would like to have a relationship with you. It's congregation on congregation. So here are some examples of, of some of the churches in, in this study that represent these particular kind of models. First, Church A, which is a multi-site suburban church, had four primary strengths in their uh, engagement with Muslims, in their outreach to Muslims. First, they had monthly meetings for training, prayer, and encouragement in relationships with Muslim friends. Second, they intentionally displayed, uh, displayed intentionality and how they invested in these friendships and how they shared their faith with their Muslim friends, even uh, going to the hospital to visit them when they would have a surgery or something, but also just everyday things like visiting them in a restaurant or um, their place of business and just being very intentional about being in those relationships. Third, they practiced and received hospitality. And we'll go a little bit more in depth on that uh, topic in our third video. Fourth, they had a diverse ministry team even including some Muslim background believers, so some people who grew up as Muslims but had become followers of Christ. A particular challenge for this group was that uh, it was not well publicized. And since this is a multi-site church, that you could have a lot of influence on these different campuses because they probably have some uh, mosque or Muslim community center in their area as well, but because this group is not known outside of just one campus, these other campuses probably aren't having that influence and engaging Muslims. Next, the organic model. Now, this is a medium-sized suburban congregation, and it five strengths that I would say that this, this church had. First, the leader created opportunities to interact with Muslims. They did things like feed my starving children. They had a Thanksgiving dinner for the mosque community. Second, he was also intentional about how to model building friendships with Muslims, especially with the local imam. Third, the congregation was committed to using prayer as part of their outreach strategy. So they would actually cancel Sunday school classes for the first Sunday of every month, and they were just focusing, focus on praying for outreach. Fourth, again, they practiced and received hospitality. Fifth, Publicity for ministry opportunities with Muslims was done very well. So it appeared in their newsletter, announcements from the front. When the slides are rolling at the beginning of the church service, they would have the announcement up there about it. People would receive emails. So they did a very good job making sure you knew this opportunity is coming up. Two primary challenges. First, the main volunteers did not receive any training. So there was training that was done but the main volunteers who were, who were really involved in outreach of the church and really engaged with it um, did not get involved in the ministry until after the training happened. So they did not have any specific training themselves. Second, there's a lack of young volunteers. And so we know that that can be a problem if you're looking for longevity of the ministry. So the last model represent the church as a, a mega church with two campuses and they had Four strengths. First, Bible study was central in an Arab fellowship with Muslims and Christians. Second, they had an experienced, motivated team, which was also diverse in ethnicity and age. And again, they had some Muslim background believers involved in the leadership uh, of this ministry. Third, they had organized and intentional training. So the training was ongoing and regular. Fourth, they practiced and received hospitality, which again, we'll dig into a little bit later in the series. Some challenges, three challenges that this uh, church experienced. Um, there were tensions created by Muslim background believers attacking the Quran or Muslims arguing about Christian doctrine that, that they didn't agree with. And that sometimes threatened to derail uh, the Bible study, but the leaders did a good job keeping it on track. Second, there was a translator that sometimes would get upset during these arguments and would just either walk out of the room or, or uh, not cooperate when, when translating what was being taught. And third, one committed volunteer received no training. So in our next video, we'll take a look at some of the challenges that these churches experienced when encountering or engaging the Muslim community. And if you'd like a 
more in-depth description of this material, please see the article link in the comment section below.